Hi, my name is Alan Sal and I help students master AP Physics. A common question I get asked from parents and from students is really like, what's the difference between AP Physics 1, AP Physics 2, and AP Physics C? And sometimes they don't even know that there's a multiple AP Physics, right? Because AP Biology, there's only one exam. AP Chemistry, there's only one exam. AP Physics, there are four exams. And so it's a little bit confusing to a lot of people as to like, what, what the heck, what do all of they mean and which one should you be taking? So let's kind of like break down the physics curriculum in general and talk about like overall things that you're trying to learn in, in AP Physics here. All right, so physics curriculum is broken up into, there's multiple topics in physics, but we always, the first thing we always learn is called mechanics mechanics or so this is sometimes known as motion right this is called classical physics this refers to how things move motion forces acceleration things going in circles going down ramps just like everyday kinds of motion objects that are moving and so there's two possible paths you can take here in terms of the ap physics curriculum you have ap physics one and you have ap physics c AP Physics C Mechanics, okay? These are two different AP exams. They're two different course materials. Now, generally speaking, I would say there's about a 90% overlap, okay? 90% the same. So what is the 10% that's different? There's a few extra topics in AP Physics C Mechanics, very subtopics, very, very minor. The biggest difference that you're going to see is there's more math involved. Now, both of them require a lot of math, okay? More math skill expected. So some of the derivations, some of the algebra is a little bit more complicated in AP Physics C. You're also expected to know calculus. Sometimes you can take it concurrently. I mean, you can't take it concurrently with it, but you are expected by, by the AP exam time, by the time you're actually taking the exam, um, you are to have a full mastery of some like first semester calculus or calculus AB material, basically. So those are the main primary differences between them. They're mostly the same. So there's not a lot of benefit to taking both of them unless like you didn't really get it very well in physics one and you want to understand it at a deeper level in physics C mechanics. But Primarily, you will find that the two classes are largely very similar. The things that are difficult in AP Physics 1 are difficult in AP Physics C mechanics, just that the math is more involved. Okay, so that's the primary, not really any major differences there. Now, when, you, when you're talking about sequencing, okay, so both of those, you are required to have a good understanding of mechanics before you go on and do the next material. And so what is the next major topic is in physics C, you just study just AP physics C electricity and magnetism. Now, in AP physics one and physics C mechanics, like I said, they were 90% the same. For AP Physics 2, they are not very similar. There is some overlap, but not nearly as much. These are two very, very, very different classes, okay? This one is only on electricity and magnetism, only e &M. Whereas in AP Physics 2, you do learn e &M, but you also learn thermodynamics. You will learn some uh, optics. This is about light. You'll learn some waves, and then you'll also learn some uh, modern physics topics. So these topics here, so like these two are the same, but all of these are extra. Now, you might be like, well, does that make this an easier class? No, 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 you, you do have to understand this in a much, much deeper level. You will do a lot more problems in e &M, much deeper, much more complicated than you will ever do in AP Physics 2. So AP Physics 2 is more of a broad cross-section. You learn a lot about different topics. Again, still kind of algebra-based, just like AP Physics 1, algebra-based. So no calculus required for here, but here, definitely calculus. Here, even the calculus is even more advanced. A little bit of understanding of third semester calculus is useful, but not required, but basically a better understanding of vectors. Vectors is really important in this class 
uh, which you generally learn when you're doing multivariable calculus, but it's okay. You can learn it in this class too. You don't need the multivariable calculus stuff, but some of the topics in there will help you in e &M. Whereas again, this, the calculus, th there's no calculus and the algebra is generally overall like simpler. So these two don't have nearly as much overlap. I would say at maybe you could say 50%, like less than 50% overlap. Okay, so they're very, very different classes. So unlike physics one and physics C mechanics, which were largely predominantly the same class, just a little bit more involved in the mathematics there. So, you know, in terms of sequencing, like generally speaking, I would say the physics C is more geared for engineers. And the algebra base is more broader cross-section. That's generally what I would say. What they're trying to model in, in university level is an algebra-based physics sequence versus a, an engineering physics sequence. You can, in high school, you can kind of intermix and match. You will want to take some kind of mechanics course before you take any, either of these other two. So you could take mechanics, then physics two. You could take physics one, then physics two. Some people could do physics one and then physics C, E, and M. That would be okay as long as you had a pretty pretty good solid foundation on here. There are some schools that just say like, hey, we want you to have a really, really good understanding of mechanics. So you do physics one, then you will do physics C mechanics. That's more traditional. And I've talked about before how in my, in my past, I took physics mechanics multiple times. I talked about why that wasn't a very good method. But, you know, if physics one didn't go so well and you really, really did want to get a better understanding, you wanted to learn it again, taking a class again or taking physics C mechanics is never a bad, never a bad choice. Like if you're really interested, you want to get a better handle on it, feel like you've got a better understanding, it's okay to do physics one, then physics C mechanics. So there's a lot of ways you could do there. Um, I would never skip any of the mechanics. All of the physics two, physics C, E, and M require you to understand the core concepts in physics one. It is assumed, and you will get questions on here that assume that knowledge from mechanics and motion. So you cannot jump straight into either of these exams, to be honest, without at least learning a significant chunk of the topics in motion and mechanics. So it's never advised to skip any of these. So you generally are gonna start with physics one or physics C and then move on to the other two based on what your priority is. Let me know in the comments below if you guys have any other questions about the differences between the AP physics